thesmartlocal.com Baby you have sex! They never check! Never sign document to marry! You become this B. It depends. At work, yes. Wow! I will like notice the tiny tiny details that make people either say like, wow, you're so meticulous, or they'll be like, get over it. No! Hey, you cannot say that. <laughs> why why I cannot say that? Because we are producers. Oh yes! We need to be detailed. Yes. To the minutes and the hours of the shoot, like how long a scene should take, like we plan that lah, for example. Yeah. I will intentionally be more detailed lah, for the things that I want to know more about or find out about. If you don't need to be detailed, then detail for it. You know, like when you detail about something, you like stress. Ah. Do you watch law dramas? Typical, la. a lot of people know it. Suits. Ah. Yeah. No, they're boring. I think people who are into it are super into it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't think. No. Oh, my mother watched one. I don't know what's the show called. Hong, Hong Kong yeah. drama. Nah, no, no, it's some Korean drama also. <laughs> Hang Sing Pong Pao. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you'll make a good one? I will cry. I'm the type of arguer where they get like very emotional. Then you're like, ah, yeah. You're my, my yeah. I did law and management for three years in TP, but there's a reason why I'm not a lawyer now. I'm here. A few months before the poly application, this family friend, this auntie, she looked at me and she's like, You look like you could be a lawyer. Wow, I changed my whole life trajectory, you know. By doing three years of something that I didn't like, I knew what I wanted. That's facts, eh? I like to argue with people. So I guess the answer is yes. I just not smart enough only. If I don't have to follow by the book, then yes. What if I have to follow by the book, like the law book, then no la. What kind of lawyer don't follow the book one? You used to study law, right? Poly la, poly not faster. Poly law like fake under. Yeah, to some extent. Poly. You also did law at the police. You're just criminal law. So yeah. our answer is no. <laughs> In today's episode of Singaporeans Try, you will be answering some sample questions from a bar exam. The only bar I know uh, is... The <laughs> like physical 100, the bar. <laughs> My fear is that I won't even understand the question. <laughs> An owner of a pizza and Italian foods restaurant opens a new location on a street where another owner has a burger restaurant. It seems like business is slow for the pizza place owner and he eyes his competitor, the burger man, as the reason. The pizza owner starts making false statements about the burger restaurant and its inferior ingredients, which he says have been causing poisoning in some of the customers. When the <laughs> burger joint owner loses customers and business income to pizza place owner, can he sue for conversion? Option A, yes, because the pizza owner interfered with his right of peaceful enjoyment and disrupted his business activities. Okay, yes, conversion is an international thought and the pizza C owner oh. acted intentionally to convert and did convert part of the burger business. C, no, because conversion consists of appropriating another's real property. D, no, because there was no interference with his ownership or right of possession to his personal property. Summary, zam zam. Oh yeah, yeah, that was what I was thinking. I don't like that things took a violent turn, it made me uncomfortable. I feel it's a trick question, because it's can he sue for conversion? Oh, uh, so not maybe, for other things. Yeah. Like, what's a real property? Every property is real, what? Is business a property? Is income a property? So, those are the questions that we will dispute using case law. Not close, no. Uh, uh, yeah. It's just shredded yeah. vegetables. It's just shredded vegetables. Yeah. Pizza and burger is the same food category but separate product. So, you cannot sue for conversion because you never convert anything. I'm just going to be just cause there's defamation of something. The burger place still has his yeah. rights yeah, to go about doing his business, yeah. selling his burgers and whatnot. Because he never take the place, he just is an asshole. <laughs> you owner, he's an asshole. <gasps> Yay! Oh! We are lawyers! Thank you, thank you! <laughs> yeah! There we go! There we go! Yeah! I'm gonna be a lawyer, mommy! No, but am I right? Like, he can, he can still sue, right? But not for conversion. He can sue for defamation. Oh yes, defamation. Which is like slander, which is what the pizza guy was doing. He was talking smack. Two people who have been cohabiting decide to get married. The man asked the woman to agree that all of his property that he now owns will remain in his name if they ever get divorced. She agrees to that but demands a written document. However, they got married without having signed anything. What's wrong with y'all? Three months later, the husband leaves the wife for another woman. <gasps> he sends a notice to vacate the home due to their prenuptial agreement. And she doesn't move. The husband sues, asking for enforcement of the oral prenuptial contract. 
Will the court likely enforce the husband's claim? A. Yes, because the consideration for the contract was the marriage and the consummation of the marriage made the contract complete and enforceable. B. Yes, because the prenuptial agreements are Prenup given. Prenuptial. Ah, yeah, never mind lah. That's why I'm not a lawyer, right? Are given the benefit of the doubt when it comes to enforcement decisions. C. No, because the contract in consideration of marriage must be in writing and the prenuptial was therefore not legal as long as it remained oral. D. No, because the husband did not live up to his promise to put the agreement in writing and therefore was guilty of fraud. What a fraud. Yeah, man. Them fraud up, no. <laughs> I think the key term here is prenuptial. Prenuptial, uh, any contract made before the marriage for the sake of that marriage in case one of the parties were to dissolve the marriage. Uh, I would like him to get the electric chair because he is unfaithful. Must have contract one la. If not, who even knows what you say? Regardless of... <laughs> Sorry. Rega <laughs> <laughs> I think the court is very unlikely to enforce the husband's claim due to the nature of why he left the wife. Mm. So it's, it's no la. Our answer is no. Yeah, our answer is no. Then by elimination, by the way, D? The C, C, C lor. Okay. Yeah. C, C for correct. correct. C, always I'll have a black and white. <laughs> yes. If you follow uh, Jess's law advice and then something go wrong, right? We are not liable for it. Let's go. Yeah, there we go. Ha <laughs> ha! Mommy, you're gonna be a lawyer. Yay! Give us our law certificates. Tomorrow, we will be reporting for business at the law firms. Oh my god, we can start our own firm. Ours will be Cheng and Krishnan LLC. It sounds really good. It yeah. sounds like we are gonna make more nice. A man was at a party where he observed a female guest who had passed out and was unconscious and alone in a bedroom of the house. The man locked the door and quietly took the female's purse, emptied all of the money into his pockets and removed the jewellery from her person. He was apprehended and charged with robbery. Can he be convicted of that crime? A. Yes, robbery is unlawful taking of property from a person by intimidation or force. B. No, this is not robbery because there's no intimidation. You need no force against an unconscious victim. C. Yes, robbery does not require that the victim be subdued by force or be placed in fear. D. No, this was not robbery because it occurred in a private home and not in a business establishment on the street. That ain't. D's out. No D. No D. For real. I am fairly confident <coughs> that robbery does involve uh, force. Use of force on someone. What if the person is physically unable or feeling fear? I feel that he can, he can be convicted of... No, he can be charged for robbery and he can also be charged for something else. So you have a logical reasoning to your selection. You know why I choose B or not? Because it sounds the most law of all the options. Okay. <laughs> so, I think that robbery is the one where it's force and intimidation. I don't really have a logical explanation. I'm just going by vibes, you know? See, even on the street, right? It can be theft. It can be pickpocket. Mm. Because the last one never gives the element of force. B. There we, we go. go. <gasps> Give me the rope now. Yeah. Okay, why is it not a robbery? <laughs> Basically, no, uh, there was no force. So that's that's what constitutes a robbery. You are placing the victim in fear or apprehension. To me, simple. You take something that is not yours, is robbery. A business owner had a feud and bitter blood with a former employee. One day, that employee came uninvited into the owner's office, brandishing a loaded shotgun, approached the owner's desk and raised the weapon. The owner, however, was secretly waiting for the opportunity. As the employee began to press on the trigger, the owner pulled a gun from her drawer and killed him. The owner admitted she felt malice toward her enemy. The authorities charged her with murder. Can she be convicted? A. Because she acted in self-defense. B. No, because these facts constitute justifiable homicide. C. Yes, because she had been lying in wait for the victim. And D. Yes, because the owner cannot claim self-defense when her motive is evil. She only shared that she feels malice towards that person, but then she never say what is her plan. She wouldn't even have known that he's coming. Oh like my god, she, she just OT every single day. <laughs> Actually, this question is quite hard. Even though I watch a lot of true crime. I only watch all the cop shit, you know. 
Like they want to, they kill themselves, then they get teleported by UFOs or some theory like that. No, it's not. No. Yeah, I think it's murder. Like I agree that it's murder. Yes, yeah. but which one? I think quite clearly it's D la. Exam people will tell you motive is evil. Why? Wait! And no answer <laughs> until you stop talking. Why? Pick one ah. 25% chance. I'm gonna choose B because I feel like the answer will be plot twisty. It's quickly because I'm <laughs> scared. D for estate, that's the employee. You copy my answer ah. Mm. I think because there's malice. So malice usually you can charge. Huh? Why? Hey. Hey. Oh, it's so low. <laughs> so low. So basically, she will say that, oh, it's self-defense, because if I don't bang-bang him, he will bang-bang me, then I die. Oh, so one of us had to die, and it was him. If this is the requirement Answer. criteria for self-defense, then we take it. Okay. Oh my god, it says the word sex! Ah! A man and a woman dated for several weeks. During that time, the man repeatedly asked the woman to have sex. Each time, the woman responded that she would not have sex with the man unless they were married. One evening, the man promised the woman that they would elope the following weekend if she would agree to have sex. The woman agreed and the couple had sex. The following weekend, the man told the woman that he had no intention of eloping and only made that promise to get the woman's consent. The woman reported the man to the police who later arrested and charged the man with rape. Is the man guilty of rape? Wow, this is a difficult question. Option A, no, because fraud in factum did not negate the woman's consent. B, no, because the fraud in the inducement did not negate the woman's consent. C, yes, because the woman's consent was obtained by fraud in factum. Or D, yes, because the woman's consent was obtained by fraud in the inducement. He should be electric chaired seven times. Why is that? Until he burns to a crisp. I think it's the second one. It's something to do with fraud in the inducement. It was said clear that she understood what she was getting into. So in terms of fraud infectum, I don't think that it was the case for this uh, scenario. Huh? I think you won't get charged for rape. Oh. <laughs> you as a lawyer, you're going to jail, you. Oh. <laughs> Whoopsie daisy. Whoopsie daisy. Sorry about it, babes. I choose to have some hope. If that makes me dumb, so be it. B, B, <laughs> for B, B. you have B. sex? Then never check. Never sign document to marry. You become this B. My answer is A. Huh? A. Oh my god, you were right, yeah? Yes. <gasps> yeah. She got all correct, eh? Eh, no. No, no. Ah, go on, flopped. So basically, she cannot say that she did not consent because she did, but then she was like tricked. What were the questions? We learned some big words today, such as fraud in the inducement. Oh. I feel that like I could do a lot better alone in this studio. <laughs> okay. Okay, like, I mean, I didn't understand. I think it's just a lot of words. I think not too bad. In terms of difficulty... I think you... If not MCQ, I think that much. Ah... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If given a chance again, would you pick up your... I would like to live. <laughs> but it's a very interesting field, for sure. But it's not for everyone, lah. Oh. I think as long as Shaleen is not with me. Hey! I think I can score well in anything I do. It's hard lah. I know for a fact that I will not, I will not, I say that I study but I won't study one. I do have a couple of lawyer friends now and it's damn check, like legit. But I want to lah, I want to just take it for fun. Maybe not admitted to the bar lah. Thank you for watching this episode of Singaporeans Try. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Ring the notification bell and watch more of our videos over there. Bye bye. Bye bye. I really have to be a lawyer. My mom would be so proud of me. <laughs> Go around, <right> away! <laughs> oh, yeah. Jay! Come back!